I'm just lying to myself and I'm just gonna keep accumulating stuff forever that's never gonna leave. When I got back into electric guitar as an adult, there was one perfect and obvious choice for a beginner all-in-one guitar rig. It was the HX Stomp. Everybody has one of these at one time or another. It is the Swiss Army knife of guitar pedals. And I liked it so much, and I was learning so much about it that when I started to feel like I was growing out of it, I wanted to lean further into the Line 6 ecosystem. But I didn't want a Helix, mainly because it's just too honking big. If I did have a Helix, I would still need my Stomp because it fits in a bag and I could put it on a coffee table. So I got the idea of buying an HX Effects and using it together with an HX Stomp, giving me the same DSP as a full-size Helix, but still having the flexibility to use the parts interchangeably. I called it my Megazord Helix, and it worked fantastically. You can watch a video all about that right here. But here's what happened after I acquired more gear and moved on from the Megazord Helix. The HX effects became the cornerstone of every rig that I've run since I've owned it. It is the perfect multi-effects pedal, even in 2024. Every time I change as a guitarist, if I play different music, if I buy a different amp modeler, the HX effects is right there. It's never not useful and it's usually the best tool that I own for whatever my job is at the time. So I'm going to tell you about my personal use cases for the HX effects over the years so you can see how perfect it is and then I'm actually going to tell you why I'm selling it anyway even though it's still the best multi-effects pedal I own. I love this pedal. I love snapshot mode. I think it is the best scene transition scheme of any unit ever. I love the scribble strips. I don't want to live without them. I can never buy a Helix LT. That thing is like a giant doorstop to me just because it doesn't have the scribble strips. All my sounds are different, literally for every song sometimes. I mean, every song has a separate virtual pedal board. It's amazing. I just labeled the snapshots for when they're used, like verses, bridges, choruses, chorus big. That auto swell is just kind of just in case. Or I label the snapshots for how they sound. So cleanish is like with a distortion pedal on, but it's turned down. And then lead would be a lot of distortion. And more, I don't know what that means, probably even more distortion. Usually they make a little more sense than this. I love the Line 6 effects. I love them. I think they are top shelf, out of the box, sound pretty great, meat and potato stuff. I've never felt like... I was settling or that I didn't like my sound. When I went to other units, it wasn't because I thought they would sound better with the effects. There's actually more prestigious units that I've tried and had a harder time with. I always felt like I was wrestling with the effects to get them to sound good. And I never had the experience on the Helix stuff. They just work. And I love HX Edit. I don't think there is a better PC editor for guitar effects pedals. As I mentioned, the only reason I bought the HX Effects originally is because I loved my HX Stomp and I just wanted more. I wanted more DSP so I could run more effects in the same preset. I wanted more foot switches and I wanted more snapshots. The HX Effects actually has one more snapshot than the HX Stomp. This one has four, but this one only has three. I covered the Megazord rig in detail in another video, so let me just summarize that I ran drives on the effects unit, then it goes over to the Stomp where I would run dual amps, then back to the effects unit where I would run all the wet effects, and then back to the Stomp before going out to front house. Also, the units would talk to each other both ways via MIDI. But over time, it became a way of operating that really was centered on the HX effects. I could sub out the Stomp for a different amp modeler like the Dream 65 or the Tonex, or even my Kemper. I could also sub out the Stomp for a tube amp. These two have effects loops so I can run them in four cable just like the Stomp. The other ones do not have an effects loop, so I set up a foot switch to toggle on and off the four cable so I could just run all the effects right into the front of the amp just by pressing this button and then pressing this button to go back to snapshot mode. And the thing just keeps being useful. I recently saw a guy play on a cruise ship and he was singing with an acoustic guitar and he had that Boss RC600 looper station pedal and he was really effective. He didn't overuse the looper pedal. It made me so happy. He was a real good folk musician. He, he's doing exactly what I wanna get all the hobbyist guitar players doing, which is just making music that people wanna hear, people wanna sing along to. When I got home, I was like, oh, I gotta get into looper pedals. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Oh, I gotta, I gotta get into busking or whatever. At first I started researching what a good starter looper pedal would be and then I realized I already own it. It's the HX Effects. Actually, between the units I own, there were three that had really good loopers in them, but the best one was the HX Effects. Check out this patch I made for using a looper with an acoustic guitar, and I can even switch right here. It that turns on an electric guitar sound. 
It's really good. Even though there's no amp models in here, I did a trick where I put a distortion pedal and then a third party IR. That IR smooths out the distortion pedal enough that it's almost like an amp. And then I can just turn it off. And then the other buttons are the looper. I don't like most of the out of the box controls for loopers. I don't like how the same button will do like recording and overdubbing and you tap it twice to stop or if you tap it twice and your fingers are crossed then it might go in reverse. And I don't like even the six button looper on the HXFX because you have to press it and it, it takes all your buttons. I can't press three buttons to get to a menu to turn this thing on and off if I'm playing live, right? I need to be able to play the looper and then hit the button and then play the solo and then hit the button and stop the looper and go back to rhythm. I really just use record, I use play, I use stop and I use undo. I set this whole thing up in the command center, which looks like that and see you can set up for, for all the foot switches what they do. These lightning bolts are what happens as soon as that preset loads or snapshot. And it's actually really easy to set this kind of thing up. Starts with the IR that I use for acoustic guitars. Then there's an EQ that's flat now, but it's just in the moment if I feel like something needs to happen. Then you have the distortion pedal and you have that third party IR to smooth out the distortion pedal and then the looper. So whatever I record with the looper, it's gonna sound like whatever was on when I was recording it. And then the reverb goes over everything and then it's out the door. One other use case people don't think about much is that the HXFX is fantastic as an experimentation tool. You can A-B tones, you can try things, you can dial things in. Everything is so customizable, the loopers, the signal chains. This is an EQ tester preset that I made. So basically I can record something with the looper and then just let it play and I can A-B test different EQs with each other. And usually I'm using this kind of thing to make an EQ block that will bridge the gap between different guitars that I might use with the same preset. If I'm playing a set, I'm doing these songs, I already have the presets, but all those presets were kind of dialed in for my Les Paul, which usually they are, but I wanna bring my Strat. I have a, I have a EQ block I use, Strat Dark, boom. It's, a, it's actually set up on all of my patches right there. If I'm using my Strat instead of my Les Paul, when I get to that song and load it, I just press that button before starting, go back to snapshot mode, and I'm good to go. I've even paired it with the HX Stomp with a looper at the end of the signal chain so I can record a baseline tone with my Les Paul, and then the HX FX has the looper in the beginning of the signal chain where I record the dry guitar tone, and that way I can compare them as I tweak. So if the Line 6 HX FX is so perfect and useful and versatile, why am I selling mine? First, I have too much stuff. I can't use it. It might seem like an odd thing to cut the thing that I use the most, but if you think about it like a Venn diagram of the gear that I have and what it can do and what I need it to do, I'm really committed to the Kemper as an all-in-one for playing electric guitar live, and that's gonna be the case for at least the rest of the year. For multi-effects around the house, I still have the Stomp. I can't sell the Stomp. The Stomp does what the HXFX does, a little worse in most cases but the Stomp can do some things that the HXFX just can't do. It's smaller, it has a master volume knob, it has the amp models, it has headphone output, it also functions as an audio interface, and that's really important to me, especially if I'm practicing at home with a track, it brings the track and my guitar signal together before going to my PA speaker. The Stomp also has a much easier user interface if you're just working with the pedal, but the really sad thing about that point is, <laughs> After all these years, I finally feel at home with the HXFX user interface. I know where all the menus are, I can bop around. It actually is no more comfortable for me to be on the HX Stomp than on the HX Effect. This is as easy and painless and at home now as anything else I own, and it's going away. For an acoustic guitar rig to accompany myself while singing, I think I would keep the HX Stomp if I was busking. I don't even own a portable speaker yet. Like this is a, a new passion for me and who knows how quickly it's gonna fade. My whole life I've toted my guitar around town and made music in public. I've never done it with amplification and you would need amplification to use a looper. I guess if I get into that, I'm gonna wish I still had the HX effects. The Stomp will do it. I have a setup, it requires the extra two button foot switch. It's more cumbersome than the HX effects, and I would probably wish I still had the HX effects, but I, I can't keep the thing for, for a what if in the future. I'm gonna hate not having the scribble strips if I end up doing that a lot and using the stomp in public. At the end of the day, the past few months, the only thing I've been using the HX effects for, that I, it was the only thing that could do that, was the MIDI controller for the Kemper. 
and then I was in Guitar Center the other day, and you know they had one of these for a hundred bucks. It came with a case and a nice MIDI cable. I, I couldn't help myself. I'm sure you've been there. You know how it feels. If I can sell the HX Effects, which is you know, not inexpensive. To replace it with a hundred dollar thing, that's good, right? Doesn't that sound like a good idea? I also have more buttons on these. I can run the rigs down here and then run a couple effects here, performance browsing buttons here, and I don't have to worry about going to a different snapshot to get there. You know, I'm really full of crap. I, I don't even like that MIDI controller as much as I like using the HX effects as the MIDI controller. There is one feature and one feature only that has led me to want to try that over this, and that is the tap tuner feature and how it interacts with the Kemper. I love to program for the song what the tempo should be, but when I run the HX effects and it's telling the Kemper what the tempo is supposed to be, it's not getting any information that I've programmed into the Kemper from the song. And I'm not gonna have a different MIDI controller patch for each song. Why wouldn't I just use the patches I already have for those songs? So it's just this thing, I'm wondering if I can run two-way MIDI and if I did that, can I tell the Kemper to tell the HX effects what the tempo is when a new rig or preset loads, and then I can just change it as I needed from here. I don't know if that would work. I probably shouldn't find out because I would be tempted to keep this thing. I can't do that. No, I'm finally gonna sell something. I've acquired gear and I told myself I'm gonna get in at the right price and I'm gonna try to get out for close to what I paid for it. I have an opportunity to do that. It's the right deal, it's a fair deal. It's half trade for a product that I'm interested in looking at and a little bit of cash and to feel like I did the right thing because I'm just an addict if I don't sell this thing, okay? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just lying to myself and I'm just gonna keep accumulating stuff forever that's never gonna leave if I don't do this now, I feel like I feel like I need this. I feel like my wife needs this. She needs to see me. She needs to see some of this guitar stuff just go the other way. But I am going to wish I had it if I start going around town with a powered speaker playing live with an effects loop. It's luxurious compared to the equivalent solution with the Stomp. And I do play my guitar around town. And you should too. It's great that you like to play guitar. But stop keeping it to yourself, okay? Get out there. Make music that makes people happy. You'll be glad you did.